good gray gang we're out here today we are going to be doing some really cool deer preparation in this video we got some bows we got some big equipment we got a tree stand and we got a food plot it's gonna be a pretty cool video and we got some really cool targets that we're gonna show you towards the end but as of right now we're heading back to the food plot and we're taking that thing with us because we got some work to do let's go be making the food plot it's not going to be a giant food plot like the field we's driving in we're going to keep that for hay because i don't know we got to feed the cow but anyways this is a spot that was not used for really anything at all but it's decently flat and i'm sure the dirt has a little bit of potential here i actually didn't think i was going to do this but then i was actually talking to austin which is deer meat for dinner's cameraman and i showed him a picture of this i actually showed him a picture of my feeder that i put up because i can't remember if this was in the video or not but we originally got that deer feeder for actually for the goats and chickens but the goats started figuring out how to shake free corn out of it so i had to take it away from them and i put it back in here but anyways i sent austin a picture of it he's like why don't you scrape all the leaves out of the way and like plant stuff here and i was like you know that's, that's a pretty good idea actually so we got some pretty flat stuff back here we got a few trees right here that we're going to have to move but that's what we brought the excavator for but overall we have like what maybe half an acre of decently flat ground we can't go past the fence because we don't own it we can't go over the hill because you can't really plow it. But as for this little flat spot right through here, we're going to plant something cool. Now what we have over here is we already have a feeder. Me and Ethan actually just set that up. We never really filmed it. We got some corn throwing out. Deer season's not for a really long time, so we kind of just got it. I've got a trail camera over there. I'm just wanting to get pictures because I've never actually had a deer feeder like ever. By the end of this video, we're actually going to check out that trail camera and see the animals. We got a lot of animals, okay? More than you'd ever think without a feeder. And then for the actual tree stands, you can see over there, there's that tree stand. It's a buddy stand as well. But the bad thing about that one is that in order to get to that tree stand, you have to walk through the place that you're actually hunting. And maybe you can get away with that with maybe some does. But for an actual buck and maybe even four does, it's going to be best if they just have no idea you're there. So what I was thinking was we could come over here, set up that tree stand on that big pine tree. That's what I was thinking because that pine tree, we can come in from the field and if the wind's right, they will not, won't be able to smell us at all in this location. And then it's also pretty thick. Now from the tree to here, that's probably around 30 to 35 yards, which will be perfect for a bow or crossbow. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. First, I'm gonna move those trees though. And this one, that's gotta go. That'll be fun. Well, we've done quite a bit, actually. We got the big stuff out of the way. Those fallen limbs, they'd been there for a long time. Then we actually knocked down those trees. That gave us another path for the tractor to get through or whatever we're planting. A lot of the leaves we've not moved yet just because they're leaves and we don't necessarily need an excavator to move leaves. We can do that on our own. Looks pretty nice. It looks very nice. And uh, once we uh, dug up this, we noticed that the dirt's actually like pretty good dirt. I mean, just from what we can tell, we can kind of fix that up some more. But overall, we're just looking at it and we're going to be able to get some pretty good swipes through with a tractor through here. He's already grass and ferns going right here yeah so like we know that the soil is good because in the very few places where our grass seed actually landed which is probably where i've run through here on the side by side and the mule and some seeds fell off or something we have some really good grass here so that lets us know some good stuff's happening here it ain't all dried out either under these leaves it's good and moist right? yeah it's gonna be cool i think this is actually gonna be my number one hunting spot of the year right here i think this will be pretty good Maybe if you're a worm. But yeah, guys, we're just going to get to it. We'll catch up with you guys here in a minute. I think we're going to set up the tree stand next. 
Okay guys, we're, it's been a couple hours. We cleared out a little bit of that more. We're still not done with it, but we're putting up the tree stand. This tree stand we're using is a Summit tree stand and it is the buddy stand. Big thanks to Summit, they've helped us out a ton. And we got more tree stands to set up too, which is awesome. And they're gonna help us out with the food plot stuff. But this here is a buddy stand. We got the shooting rest. You can't see it too good right now because it's kind of laying down, but the seat folds up. Then whenever you fold it down, it's just a comfy seat. And the reason I went with a buddy stand is obviously because I'm a YouTuber. And uh, usually whenever one person's hunting, the other person's filming. So I'll be able to have plenty of space for cameras or a cameraman. But yeah, the spot we picked out, we're thinking about this big pine tree. That way you can kind of see this corner of the field as well as down there on the food plot. Now the food plot may be a decent shot, but I think we can do it. And that's actually what we're gonna do here in a few minutes after we get it set up. We got some cool, really cool deer targets. We'll set them down there and we'll see what I can do. Cause right here in this exact tree, you have access to the half the field. You have access to the soon to be food plot. And you have that entire mountain to where if you can twist around, which in a buddy stand you can, you can see all that. How are we supposed to get it up there? Well, I put those legs on there and use a weight and knock those as a lever. That'd be a good idea. And we picked this tree, number one, because it's a good spot, but then we checked it. It's a definitely a live tree. It's a straight tree. It has a really strong foundation right here at the base. This is gonna be awesome. Let's do it. guys so uh the tree stand is up i'm talking solid like i got four straps up here this thing ain't going nowhere i do want to say um if you have a tree stand yourself be very careful and i wouldn't really advise putting it up alone it's almost impossible and even if you could do it it's not exactly the safest thing to do as you saw whenever we was putting us this one up every time i'd come up here i'd have ethan holding the bottom and once i was up here i was strapped in pretty good strapped in with ratchet straps <laughs> but as for now like this stands legit right now we got to clear out this tree ethan's going to do that for us real quick right yeah and now the only thing we got to do is clear out those other trees pull out the bow target and then just plant that's all we got to do and we've literally built i'm going to go ahead and say this the number one deer hunting spot in my whole holler no doubt literally all right ethan set up the tripod go ahead and destroy that tree but yeah guys while ethan's down there chopping away i'll bring you up into my new crib fold down seat padded seat padded back we can just sit right here we can just chill son right now we have a vigorously shaking tree because there is a kentuckian hacking away full speed full ricky bobby right there this tree's about to disappear but it's actually in our way pretty bad and it's not giving us any cover we're gonna leave that big pine tree because it gives us cover right in here and if there is an animal walking through here it'll be totally fine because he's either gonna come right here give us an open shot or he'll come on over there give us an open shot it's not exactly open yet but we're not exactly done and as for behind me if it's rifle season this is all game on because you can see a little bit through there and if a deer's down there with a rifle you can definitely take him out this man's going straight paul bunyan down there he is relentless anyways i'm hoping you guys are liking this video because this is super fun to make we're out here making progress as an investment we're not getting an immediate return out of it we're not getting anything out of it right now but we're putting a lot of work in and we're going to benefit six months down the road whenever deer season actually gets here and that's going to be awesome because i can tell you right now if we sustain that food plot there's going to be a lot of animals killed out of this stand right here you done paul bunyan yeah. hey johnny appleseed you done down there push it oh god oh yeah we're good we're good yeah now that thing's out of our way now we just gotta figure out this one i think we can put a half stick of dynamite right there just blow that one completely off let's go get the bow targets i'm ready to shoot some all right guys we went to the house we got my bow and we got the new target this is actually a morel target oh ow this is their bionic buck so that's gonna be pretty cool look at the antlers it comes with i won't even be able to hit this i'll that's, be shaking too bad that's a monster man what we got here oh they put his head in the bag that's kind of sketchy it looks like it belongs in africa with them veins popping oh dude this is sick look at that dude it's like a foam target but it's not it's like well it said on the pack it was refillable mind you of a tighter side yeah it's like an actual bow target oh and you just stuff it in there and recap the outside yeah, that's pretty cool that is pretty neat now finishing touches 
Perfect. His name is David. David was hit by a car when he was two years old and he never fully recovered. Now on to the bow. All right, for the bow, it's the same one I've shot all year and last year and the year before that and the year before that. The arrows is what we kind of want to talk about because we actually did an entire video on just what kind of arrow penetrates the best. I had some 550 grain arrows. We found that they penetrated the best. They were also the heaviest arrow we shot. But a lot of you guys were actually asking what kind of arrows these are because I bought them on Amazon for like $6. Here's the exact ones I bought. I bought 300 spine with a .003 uh, millimeter uh, tolerance or whatever. It's a gooey gooey goo. I don't, I've never even looked at the name. But these arrows were like $6. So like $60 for 12 of them. They're really straight. They're heavy. And they're in 300 spine. And a lot of you guys were asking about them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put these arrows, link in the description. I'm going to put these inserts also down in the description if you want to make them tip heavy. And then I'm going to put these tips. These are 150 grains, but you can also get 100 grains, whatever, down in the description. Amazon link. None of these items are brand name they're all pretty much generic and they're all cheaper and i'm just gonna tell you right now this is a really cheap arrow and it's shot just as good as any other arrow but yeah now we're gonna head up to the stand me and ethan both we're gonna test out just how effective this is for a bow hunting scenario all right guys david the buck has just stepped out kg the deer hunter has stood up he's got his bow he will not forget to range this time 20 yards exactly that'll be an easy shot for anybody except me is he dead? I mean, he, he's not moved, but he's also not fell down, so I'm honestly not really that sure. Go check out the damage and tell me what you see. I see a messed up deer. So like a little, little low, but definitely consistent. Pretty good. I think that would have killed him. Yeah. All right, now we're going with the scenario. We're both in the stand over the shoulder. Let's see what we can do to David. Oh, his antler fell off. <laughs> he must have been ready to shed. Why couldn't I do that in Florida? That's literally perfect. Let's go check it out. Where was this accuracy in Florida? That's just what I want to know. Where was this accuracy in Florida? All right, guys, bow time's over. If you see those trees, they're not going to be there in a minute. Okay guys, as you can see, it's a totally different day from the last time we was filming, but I got a shotgun, I'm in the tree stand, we gotta trim some trees, and this is by far the easiest and quickest way to do this. Got old 12 gauge. Now the thing is a lot of these limbs that actually need trimming, they're like as tall as this tree stand and they're over there. So it's gonna be pretty hard to even touch them with any kind of anything, really. Shotgun's gonna be the most efficient and quickest. And shells are only like 25 cents a piece. Okay, here we go. First one. There's one. Took a few more shells than I expected. Dang, these trees are tough, dude. I ain't even putting a dent in them. All right, I put a pretty good dent in that one. Dang, dude, I don't know what I'm, I don't know if I can do much to these trees or not. They're pretty solid. That's my last shell, dude. I just spent $2 and only got rid of two and a half limbs. Maybe a shotgun's not really that effective. Or maybe I got a bad choke. I didn't even switch chokes, dude. No wonder, this is the open choke. Anyways, now we gotta do another thing to the tree stand and I'll come on down and show you that. So the next thing we're gonna be doing is uh, making sure that no one takes our tree stand. So we gotta change. If you live in a place where you don't lock up every tree stand you own, I don't know. You won't have a tree stand anymore. Good job to you guys, because we can't do that here. If you don't lock up your tree stand, you ain't going to have a tree stand. I've not exactly figured out how I'm going to do this. Like, I know I need to go around the tree, but I don't exactly want to get the chain around the tree. Sling it around there. I'll try. Oh, snap. What the heck, man? I think I bought a little bit too much chain. Maybe. I bought 14 foot. What made me think that the circumference of the tree was 14 foot? What was you thinking, KG? 
Boom. Now we got a chain on a tree. But the good news is that uh, nobody's still in the tree stand now. All right, guys. So here's the situation we're in. We're kind of in a limbo process. I don't even know what that means, but it sounded good. Basically, what I'm saying is that we can't really do anything else in this video until our seeds get here. But once our seeds get here, it's game over. We're about to have an epic food plot. So as for right now, I'll see you guys maybe one week, maybe two weeks, maybe four weeks, maybe 2031. Whenever the seeds get here, I'll get back with you. All right, so uh, it's been four months since you last seen us, and that's not because we didn't do anything. We actually come out here, we tilled up the ground. I don't know if y'all seen that or not. We put fertilizer out, we put lime out, and we seeded it. We put up a deer feeder, we put corn in it, set up a trail camera, and you know what KG did? He uh, accidentally deleted all the footage, so it's literally four months later. We seeded it, what? Two months ago or three months ago? We seeded it for this even like produced a turkey off from it. So we seeded this a long time ago. I don't know, I just lost footage. So let's just go on down, check out the wildlife paradise. Three months later, I guess it's a little update for you guys anyhow. You'd probably rather see the update. But anyways, let's tell them what we planted. That's the thing, I don't actually know what we planted. It was called a wildlife spring mix and it's pretty much a lot of things, but if you look down here, here's some of it. You got clover for sure whatever that is and then it had sunflowers in it i don't know why they put sunflowers in it but they definitely didn't grow but check it out so far so good some places are doing really good some places aren't like this place you know i put a lot of seeds here and none of it's growing maybe then, we put too much fertilizer there maybe or i just didn't till it or driving the defender on it there's a help. lot of things i'll be honest we didn't really do this very good next year we'll do it better though i promise maybe Here's the deer feeder, or not necessarily deer feeder, corn feeder, because it feeds everything. We got this thing half full of corn. That's like $100 worth. Right here, not much has happened, kind of sad. Over here, right here, I don't know what we did right here, but something happened good. Okay, this is amazing. If the whole place looked like this, we'd be in good shape. Like from here back is pretty decent and you know what i think it was what? i think it was because we never drive here and so we never actually patted it down i think literally the entire thing is what was tilled up and what wasn't because you can see a track going right through there where we drove on it like a few too many times and never tilled it up good enough and we're going to check the trail camera here in a minute so don't leave if you want to see what lives here but overall we created the most epic hangout spot for deer and turkeys ever i think turkeys like it more than anything because whenever we drove up turkeys ran away yeah. So they're all over this. Also, one thing that I didn't even tell Ethan and wasn't even filmed in the first place. I just had a weird bag of like minerals or something. And I just came and yeeted it on that stump so that hopefully deer will eat it. And then also yeeted some over here at this stump, which may or may not explain why there's nothing growing right here. But yeah, I mean that mineral stuff, the deer will literally eat a stump kind of crazy but yeah we've had the corn feeder set up with half whole kernel corn and half cracked corn just so you know the deer can't eat all of it but actually what i figured out is that in the spring deer don't really like corn that much because they don't really have a reason they're out eating fresh grass and stuff and they kind of just avoid the corn until the fall but what does eat it in the spring is turkey so whenever we check this trail camera which has been knocked down somehow we're most likely going to see a bunch of turkeys and hopefully we see some deer though i bet there's a coon on there have to be there guarantee there's a coon squirrels i mean that's the thing we built it isn't just for deer even though it's primarily for deer which is you know why we set up the tree stand and stuff it was made for deer but it's going to support honestly literally everything because even predators are going to get a kick out of this because they're going to have all their food sitting right here waiting on them dude if i was a bobcat i'd just hang out here all the time if we look there's there's a lot of gnats and i didn't build the food plot for gnats and one thing which we might do later i'm not really sure yet we might actually get one of those kiddie pools and build a pond over there that'd be cool because they got everything needs water all right me and ethan's gonna go check the trail camera hopefully we got some well i don't think we have any pictures nope here here you can see one of our deer on camera eating at her deer feeder Real nice deer. He's he's full rack and really big. 12 pointer. Mm -hmm. ne next we got a squirrel and he's just chilling. He's just having a good time defending his territory. He's just uh, being a good guy. His name's Chad. Tell him about your uh, moose back there. Yeah, he's back there. He's been uh, visiting the deer feeder and um, he's just a cool guy. He's just, we call him moose. And then we got these turkeys. They're pretty cool sometimes. 
The two Kodiak grizzlies. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a place back there, okay? Wildlife paradise, I'm telling you guys. Look at this green grass. I bet you didn't believe it. It didn't look it out there, but look at this trail camera picture of this super green grass. That is so crazy. It's like, that's that's crazy. If it, they look close, they can see the big Galapagos tortoise back there. Yeah, if you look real close, you can see the Galliboby tortoise. And then we'll end it off with this raccoon. He's just chilling, but, you know, he's just, he's just... He's just chilling. Unfortunately, that's all the trail cam pictures we have from our wildlife paradise. But here's the thing, guys. Stay tuned because we're definitely going to hunt out there. I've already killed some squirrels out of there. This video here, the sawed off shotgun video, we've already killed a squirrel out of that food plot. Or this video right here, it's where I killed a four bearded turkey. The food plot hadn't actually grown yet, but we still technically killed it out of the food plot. So check those videos out if you want to. If we can get 10,000 likes on this video, me and Ethan will go out there with our bare hands and dig a pond for the paradise. Really? <laughs> and it's gonna be a big pond too. Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs>